My name is Brian Gorel. Uh, welcome to uh, a look inside of applied machine learning. So, uh, my name is Brian Gorel. I'm from Cloudera's Fast Forward Labs. Um, so, within Cloudera's machine learning team, I help take care of the large client engagements, the large programs, some of the behind the scenes operations, and occasionally I'm still allowed to help out with some of the research. So, what I'd like to do today in speaking about applied machine learning is really one kind of give you a little bit of background in our perspective from Cloudera on what that represents for an organization. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about do's and don'ts and some challenges that people are facing with applying machine learning within a large organization to really solve business problems. Uh, then I'm going to take you a little bit into how Cloudera Fast Forward Labs approaches some of these challenges, a little bit on use cases, and we'll wrap things up from there. Sound good? Great, and I know I caught you guys just after lunch, so I'll try not to put you to sleep with sort of that, that little uh, after lunch hangover, but uh, we'll see. <clears throat> but moving right along, uh, just to kind of set the stage, and when you're talking about machine learning within an organization, and it doesn't matter if you're uh, working for a big bank, a big university, healthcare company, one of the things you need to do is you need to get it out of that dialogue about you know specific algorithms. And like your leadership does not want to hear about you know, random forests and decision trees. Um, being able to put things in the context of, hey, machine learning can help us grow. It can help us connect. It can help us protect aspects of the business are what's going to really capture people's attention at a senior level in order to allow them to continue to invest and drive the growth of machine learning in an organization. And what do I mean by that? And within an organization such as a large multinational accounting firm or, you know, one of these large consulting groups, you know, we recently were able to, to take a look at you know, the aspect of growing a business, right? creating such an efficiency in the way that they ran some of their services that they're able to change away from an hourly model to a flat fee for services that allowed them to change the business format and change the way, the way that they're recovering margins from their, their growth. Right? So being able to, to frame it not as, hey, we're doing some, some really cool um, LDA work for interconnecting you know, different aspects of the tax code, that's not what they want to hear. They really want to hear, how are you going to help our business grow? Right? Or for something like a telecom, being able to take a look at you know, customer churn data and not just say, hey, you know, we've run some machine learning and we figured out there's a 65% chance that this group of customers is going to cancel their service. No, being able to help them understand what that next step is. Oh, you know, we're able to figure out what data is most important. You know, what, what is really driving whether or not somebody is going to cancel their service or decide to level up and expand into a new program or new offering that they haven't seen before. When we start talking about connecting things, I'm with an organization such as a large oil and gas firm, and you've got trillions and trillions of data points coming in, and being able to, to make sure that all of that data is used and useful, whether it's an organization like this, or Internet of Things, or interconnected cars, or even just connecting people within an organization's HR department. Right? It provides new ways of creating advantages that you can take things out of the framing of just speaking about specific algorithms in order to really make sure that people are understand what you're trying to do for their business. And then certainly within you know, the idea of protecting the business, I'm sure you all have ideas of, you know, you've certainly heard about hacks and you know, security concerns, whether it's insider threat or external physical threats um, to an organization. There's all kinds of ways that you can frame the discussions around what you can do with applied machine learning tools in order to make sure that the, the conversation goes forward. Now with that stage sort of set, one of the things I want to do though is make sure that we're actually making machine learning boring, right? We don't want to put things on people's radar that are going to cause your, your executives and those people who are investing their time and resources to worry about what's going on when you ask for new budget um, in order to expand your growth within your organization, your data science team, new architecture resources, what have you. We want to make machine learning boring. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, even just a few years ago, 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, right, this, this would have been a challenge for a lot of computing systems. Right? But solving this would have, been, would have been pretty cool. right? And then, you know, for something like this, forget about it. I mean, like, people are going nuts over being able to solve, oh, is it a, a puppy, a muffin, fried chicken? Like, you know, you're looking at multitask learning here. You're looking at breaking down a neural network in, in a bunch of different ways and, and interchanging the embeddings for what you need to do to be able to, to identify whether or not there's a puppy in that picture. Pretty cool stuff. But we want to get away from just being able to solve these, these kind of novelty problems and really get people excited more about 
what are the actual use cases that we can solve, right? How are we actually going to be able to use this in our organization, whether you're in medical technology, uh, whether you're in finance, whether you're in insurance, uh, e-commerce, you name it. There's real problems that really can be solved, and that's what you need to focus on. The other part of this is getting away from the idea that you know, there's so much out there in terms of applied uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and there's so much confusion in the marketplace, and really helping people sort through you know, what's out there in order to understand machine learning and help that become a thing that is as commonplace as as a cell phone or a laptop computer that's just reliable, it's standard, it's something that people you know, go to and, and trust and use every single day. So that's sort of the overall picture of where we want to get to with machine learning and applied machine learning. And you know, within industries, with, uh, across industrial, uh, industrialization, we're seeing little bits and pieces of this moving forward in organizations, right? You're seeing machine learning get applied in laboratory settings. You're seeing machine learning get applied in you know, uh, logistics and, and all kinds of e-commerce settings. Right? But being able to get a whole organization on board with the idea of framing that data um, as something that can be leveraged and used to drive the business forward is it's going to take a little bit more work. And there's a lot of challenges around, around that. So when we talk about making machine learning boring, what we really want to do is we want to start taking a look at, well, how do we break down these steps to make it so that machine learning is, is not just a novelty, but it's something that's common, standard, talked about, and understood within our organization. And the first step for all of this is strategy, right? Planning out a route to make sure that people understand what is on your roadmap, what data products are going to be useful and effective for you in the near term, in the midterm, what are you going for over the longer term, right? Te creating a sequence of, of data products and a sequence of applications that people are going to be able to understand and your leadership are going to be able to visualize and say, hey, you know, that makes sense for the roadmap and it aligns with what we're trying to do overall as a company for our growth, right? So it's not just, you know, implementing one algorithm and, and saying, hey, you know, we are able to get this working, but how does that fit into the bigger picture of what the company is trying to do? You know, then we talk about de development and exploring and, and being able to, to test some of these resources. And when we talk about research and exploration in machine learning, right, there's, there's a challenge that's already built into that. And a lot of people in a lot of organizations, you know, whether you're a, a small startup company all the way up to you know, some of the biggest banks, you know, they're very familiar with software development as being something that could be a, a two or a three week sprint and you get a 85, 90, 95% solution. Right? That is very, very different from machine learning and the way it works in an organization. I mean, two or three weeks of development in machine learning may just get you a baseline understanding of, hey, we've got a 65% accurate model. Right? For leadership who's trying to make budget decisions on whether or not you can move forward and continue on investing in machine learning in your organization, that 65% question and framing is going to be very different and very difficult for them to work with, especially if they're used to working with very concrete numbers, operating cash flow, liquidity ratios, things that have been very solid, reliable, reliable fixtures in, in their past calculations. And you start coming to them with very different sorts of prospects on what is you know, machine learning and, and what is it the value that it can bring. Um, you know, beyond development, you know, we start taking a look at production. And we're going to start seeing here a cycle of you know, bringing tools in, into production, bringing technologies to the consumer or to your internal coworkers in order to make sure that they can do their business more efficiently, more, more quickly, more easily. And as a result of that, they're going to be able to start spending some additional time and taking a look at additional resources in order to, to kind of transform and, and help revamp that strategy and that pathway forward. So when we start taking a look at that strategy and, and where we're going, there's a couple other pieces that need to go into that, though, right? Absolutely, you need to consider the, the people and the organization, right? Depending upon the, the company that you're in, you may have all of your data scientists structured in one particular team in one corner of the organization. For some small companies, that may be great. For large multinationals, that may be a disaster, right? Perhaps people need to be a little bit more connected to the end users who are going to be more involved with you know, what is actually being delivered from these machine learning products what is the value that's actually going to be delivered firsthand that those end users, those business analysts, the people who are talking to the customers can really see and interact with and, and touch and feel and not just have it be this remote thing that's sort of running you know, somewhere that they don't quite understand it and can't ask questions about it. Right? Um, when we talk about security and governance, I mean, it's, 
now more than ever, it's, it's, uh, I, it's, it's key to being able to, to really work and, and sort of have table stakes for being an organization in the, the global marketplace. And you're all very familiar, I'm sure, with GDPR, where the penalty is for a single violation, right? 20 million euro or 4% of your company's revenue? And that's huge, and it's not something that can be taken lightly. It absolutely needs to be folded into these considerations. And then the technology that you need to, need to be able to support all of this is something that's going to really drive, drive home how you, you're able to move forward. So you know, just uh, from the Cloudera standpoint, one of the ways that we're looking at this is first with the platform. Um, and you know, absolutely, you can just step right outside. You can talk to all, you can talk to my colleagues and myself, and we'll be more than happy to tell you about the, the platform and the architecture that's needed to support you know, managing data you know, efficiently, securely, with the appropriate governance and being able to reference back to the data um, being leveraged across your models. Um, having the right tools in place, right? Being able to, to actually run the, the, the code, run the machine learning algorithms across your data um, is absolutely key. And the piece I really want to touch on, though, is with my team, the, the guidance piece. Um, you know, Fast Forward Labs, we're really focused on making sure that people understand how to use machine learning, how to create that strategy, how to create those roadmaps forward. Um, and you know, being able to, to not just build something and have the toolkit to build something, but if you think of Cloudera as being sort of the toolkit for building these new data products, I'm, our team is, serves as a reference point and essentially brings the blueprints and helps people with the getting started. So just to kind of set the stage as far as the vocabulary that we're talking about, you're all here. I'm sure, you're pretty, have a, I'm pretty sure you have a good idea of what is big data. When we talk about analytics on top of the big data, we're really just saying you know, being able to ask questions of your data, being able to frame the data that's, that's in front of you, being able to structure it in order to develop data science, right? the experimentation being able to solve problems using your data. And when you talk about machine learning, we're still just solving data problems, but we're using these unique feedback loops, these new algorithms that are just solving the, the, the mathematics in a little bit more clever way in order to deliver new insights, new results for your data. And then AI at the top, and really, it's no more, no less than machine learning, but it's really been framed in, in the, the commercial world and in the marketplace as being you know, not quite you know, the way the brain functions or you know, it's almost there and it's getting so close, but really just being able to provide these different insights really based on the idea of using deep learning um, in order to you know, um, solve some problems that people can't program inherently into their system. I'm going back to the, the puppy and bagel thing. I, you can't just program your computer to say, hey, decide that this is a puppy and that one's a bagel. Like you really need to develop new methods in order to really be able to take a look at, at these data sets that are coming through. Um, and when we talk about AI all the way down the stack, and you can't have one without the other. Right. So when we take a look at the, the sum of machine learning and the sum of the scale and how do we get, get there for an organization, part of what we're doing is we're creating these little AI factories, right? Where you're taking this opportunity for discovery and you're taking a look at what challenges are out there that we can solve for our customers, for our internal coworkers, in order to make sure that they're able to deliver new revenue, new value, either for the, the company as a whole, for the, the end users, for, for things that people are willing to pay money for or trade their time for, right? As you start building forward um, you know, on the platform, you've got your strategy in place, you're starting to build these products, you're putting them in front of users, right? And you end up with this, this transformation, that piece where you can start changing business models. You can start offering things that have never been heard of before. And as a result, you can start freeing up resources in order to circle back and really change the way that you're looking at you know, your business and your organization going forward. Right. So all of that was to make things a little bit easier, but it's not easy. right? For, I, I don't think there's anybody in this room or in this whole you know, conference that would say, you know, Implementing machine learning across my organization is an easy thing. And it's challenging for a lot of different reasons, right? You know, absolutely, there's, there's the challenge of the expertise, right? Making sure that the, the people have the right skills in order to be able to do what it is that you, you need them to do as far as machine learning. Um, you know, whether it's uh, new hires coming out of school or people who have been around the block for a while and, and really developing that skill set, I mean, it can be, finding those people can be quite a challenge. 
Um, you know, you have the, the data silos. Making sure that data is actually available for the people to be able to work on it is absolutely key. And then, you know, a lot of the information that's out there about machine learning, about artificial intelligence, would have people believe that, you know, complexity in these really co interesting models, you know, whether it's AlphaGo or, or some other deep learning systems, are the way to go to, to really solve your challenges, when really simplicity can be the, the best step forward. But one of the other real challenges that are being faced is just working with the data scientists themselves, right? Being able to understand that, hey, you know, a lot of data scientists, they want to just work with the data. And we want to just take it, we just want to play with it, we want to experiment, and we want to go off and we want to solve problems or, you know, create solutions or, or experiment with these different tools. Um, but that, don't, that doesn't always match with what IT is concerned about as far as data management the security, the governance, the different standards that need to be in place in order to move forward with an organization securely and avoid penalties like coming from GDPR. And typical solutions, you know, the way that this often plays out is, you know, maybe somebody will cop copy their data to their laptop, right? And maybe they're, they're looking for, you know, just playing with a new data science appliance that has never been tested within the organization before. And you don't know whether or not you're going to develop some sort of lock-in or not be able to get your data back out of it with some sort of these black box solutions. Um, copying data to a cloud data service. But all this, not only does it compl uh, co um, complicate security, but it can also make it very difficult to share models and share data and share insights across your organization, right? So when we talk about how do we start addressing these, and there's a communications piece there that makes means that you need to make sure that the data scientists who who are really running these models are folded into decisions about, you know, how do you build these systems securely? You know, what sort of tools are you using? Are you able to use, you know, Docker and Kubernetes and, you know, uh, support big and small data values as you're taking your models from development into testing, into development and production, and moving forward, right? So this is my, uh, my slide here that's a plug for Cloudera's data science workbench. Um, it's a tool that's you know, deployed with Cloudera Manager. It's got the governments and security built in. Um, but it's really designed to help address some of these challenges, right? It's designed to help the development, the training, the deployment of models in an efficient manner with that security and everything else going forward that we already touched on. So the other piece that I talked about is, you know, making sure that there is that information there for data scientists to be able to move forward and leverage data um, and, and leverage the, the information and understand what's happening in the world of machine learning. Sort through what is, what is hype and what is reality and figure out, like, is this going to be a value to me as I go forward? So Cloudera's Fast Forward Labs, you know, it says our mission is to fast track knowledge transfer. But what that really means is our team is really focused on, you know, taking a look at what's happening in academia um, and, and across business landscapes. So we have people who are you know, coming from, uh, you know, optical physics, astrophysics, anthropology, uh, neural science, um, and then working in industries, whether it's in finance or insurance or, um, you know, e-commerce or consulting, uh, government, and taking a look at what actually is relevant in each of these areas and how do we help our companies, our customers, translate these algorithms, these understandings into reality for their, their business. Um, one example that we point to regularly is you know, some of the long short-term memory algorithms, the LSTMs, that are being in, uh, used in finance for um, uh, time series analysis are absolutely the same LSTMs that are being used in the latest cutting-edge video analytics. Right? And being able to see that, hey, there's extreme value in, in these particular sets of algorithms, not just in video, not just in finance, but across other marketplaces as well. Or you, know, you start taking a look at interpretability and the way interpretability is being used not just for analyzing churn and what's going to be valuable for understanding what's driving customer behavior, but not just driving it in a negative, but we're seeing other customers seeing how can we level up using that understanding of interpretability, what data is most important, what features are most important to our customers. And then when we start taking a look at things like recommendation systems, and we're getting away from matrix factorization and just being able to say, oh, you know, both of these people like that product, so you know, when one of them likes something new, we're going to recommend it to the other person. Instead, we're starting to say, hey, you know, what is the description of that product that that person is interested in? And how does that description semantically match up with you know, this other product here? And when you run that in, ver um, 
when you run that straightforward, you can absolutely understand, you know, sort of, you know, what sort of products are people going to be interested in. But if you run it in reverse, you can start understanding what is the market base that this product might be exposed to by the way that we describe it or the way that we put it into, um, into uh, commercial, uh, commercial systems, right? So it says on here, you can think of us as your nerd best friends. And, and it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but it's, it's, it's true. And we wanna be the people that you can rely on, that you can pick up the phone, you can call, you could send an email to, to get an answer to a question, whether it's very deep down in the weeds and technical about LSTMs or implementation of, of interpretability algorithms, all the way to some of these strategic conversations about how do you build out your data science team? How do you level up some of the, the skill sets that, that are out there? Um, for some of our clients, we're even doing things like conducting final round technical interviews for senior data science candidates that need to have very particular specializations. Right? Having those strategic conversations and, and everything in between is, is really sort of the, the core and the heart and soul of, of Fast Forward Labs. And the way we break down our offerings is, and the way that we work with our customers is first you know, addressing that strategy piece, right? much as at the beginning of the cycle. Right? You really need to help clients understand where they're going first and foremost. Um, not just for development of a single product, and can absolutely focus in on you know, how do we develop the algorithm or what algorithms need to be in place in order to make sure that this system runs the way that we want. But how do you put that in context for an overall roadmap for your organization, right? And your organization's goals, and are they for you know, uh, rapid growth and rapid expansion? Or are you, do you have enough leeway from your investors to be able to, to take a step back and make a bigger swing for you know, that, that home run ball, for being able to, to go for something that's a little bit riskier but could deliver a lot more value in the long run? Right? Being able to sort through what are some of the quick wins, what are some of the easier algorithms to implement that might get um, you know, more traction for our data scientists as they're starting out earlier in their careers versus you know, some of the more complex challenges and how do we structure those in order to make sure that our bosses, our leadership, understand what we're doing as we go forward. Right? When we talk about application development, that's the next step. I'm, a lot of times it flows right out of the, the str strategic engagement. It's really taking a look at you know, building out that proof of concept, experimenting and exploring with that data in order to actually test and make sure that these algorithms are gonna provide value for you in your systems. And then advising and research. Um, I'm, it's, it's absolutely what it sounds like. It's being able to, to send an email to folks on our team to be able to answer these questions and having that trusted resource that you can turn to. You know, within Cloudera, um, we're an independent profit and loss center which means that we're not beholden to the Cloudera architecture and driving people necessarily to, you know, to the Cloudera ar architecture for our business. Our first and foremost priority is making sure that we're solving our clients' business challenges and data challenges. And as we go forward, it's really taking a look at if we can build that trust with our customers, um, even to the point where you know, we can help them build a data science organization where they don't need to rely on us so much anymore, that also translates into trust for our our uh, overall organization and how we can help you move forward and you know to the point where if we do eventually make a recommendation or it is the right move for you to transition to you know an architecture system that happens to be with Cloudera then hopefully you'll believe us when we say that's the best idea. So when we talk about applied machine learning within uh, Fast Forward Labs and we're taking a look at, at very different things we're implementing sort of the state of the possible right whether it's taking a look at real-time data streams and, and how you can integrate all these different challenges or different bits of data um, coming from you know, petroleum production platforms or you know, even transitioning to different federated systems. When you start taking a look at self-driving cars or even regular cars that are you know, transmitting data back to central servers um, without being able to necessarily transmit all of the data, whether because of connections or uh, privacy concerns, internet of things connectivity, but you still wanna be able to build those models, right? Being able to address how you can actually create those weights and create those, um, uh, the understanding and development of the model is absolutely you know, an area in which we're focused on and, and working with our customers to help them move forward. As we start going into things like interpretability, right? Or summarization. Interpretability is one of my favorites right now, partly because, and it is so useful for being able to understand what's important in a data set, but also because I, it's not just for solving business problems, I and mean, it's for solving justice problems. 
uh, one of my former coworkers working with a group called ProPublica back in the United States was taking a look at some of the black box software being used by the US judicial system in order to help decide bail and whether or not to, well, to even set bail for different criminals. And they found using interpretability that the data sets that were used to train the models were actually biased, right? They had already taken into consideration based on historical data, you know, uh, skin color and race and, and neighborhoods in which people lived in making considerations on these ju judicial decisions. And when you take a look at summarization, summarization is really being able to extract information um, from complex text using machine learning. And you know, it can absolutely apply you know, for situations where you're trying to match up you know, a, a stock portfolio with news that's going to be relevant to those decision makers or the people who actually hold that portfolio. Um, we start taking a look at things like how do you improve call service response, understanding exactly what somebody's talking about, whether it's coming in through an email or coming in over a voice call, and helping steer that, that information correctly and, and that resource correctly to not only reduce you know, time, um, time burden on the call center and efficiency, but making sure that the people get satisfactory responses and understand that, hey, actually you're there to help them. Right? And you know, across banking, financial services, fraud, risk, security, there's all kinds of challenges. Um, telecommunications, we touched on a little bit. And yeah, absolutely, manufacturing and internet of things. Um, and all these areas can all benefit from that same sort of let's make this boring platform or idea and cycle of saying, hey, we're going to go from development, we're going to create sort of the machine learning factory, we're going to take it to production and kind of recycle it back to a point where you know, we're ready to start again and start new and continue to grow, uh, connect, and protect our business. So thank you very much.